let's work the four stitch left leaning creel stitch. Now this stitch is used in the wheat shock cowl and surely other things, but that's a good example of where you'll see it. And this stitch is worked over four stitches and you're carrying your floats across that point and then catching them on the last stitch. Now, when you're working with an even number of stitches with creel, you can't do a center creel because there's no center stitch. So you either have to have it lean to the right or to the left, depending on where you catch your float. So to get that left leaning creel, I've been kind of doing a variation here. So you can't quite tell beneath what I've been up to, but let me show you, I'm ready to work the next one. So to get this float to lean up to the left, we're going to knit the first three stitches. And then in the fourth stitch, we're going to catch the float and knit it with that last stitch. Now, anytime you're doing a left leaning creel, I find it's just a little bit more challenging to work than the right leaning. So you really have to like dip your needle in there to get it going and then knit it with that last stitch. And now if I can move this one out of the way, you can kind of see I was going to the right at the bottom and now I'm going up to the left so you can kind of see how it angles. Now I'm ready to bring my yarn forward and back. I always cross the dark color over the top and if the colors are similar, then I cross the main color over the top. But that's how I keep straight which one needs to go where. Keeping in mind with Creel Stitch, you always have to keep the same color on top when you're wrapping. That's the magic of Creel Stitch. That's how you get the results. All right, so we're ready to do this again. Knit the first three stitches and then we're going to catch that float with the fourth stitch. And notice I'm maneuvering my right needle to get that tip in there. I will say I find that sharp needle tips really, really help. And so if you're struggling at all to catch those floats, check out some sharper needle tips. I like the Chowgu red lace tips. They just work so well and they're really easy to grab. Signature Needle Arts also has some good sharp tips. All right. Now we'll do this one more time. So I've crossed my yarns and I am going to catch another four stitch left leaning creel. Pick it up and knit them together. And there we go. And with any kind of creel stitch knitting, just keep in mind, it takes quite a few rows before the pattern starts to develop. In the early stages of any project, you're gonna think, this looks weird. I don't know if this is working. Something doesn't look right here. What you're seeing on my needles doesn't look right because A, it's early in the process and B, I'm transitioning back and forth to show different techniques. But as you're working on your project, make sure you give it an inch or two to start to see the pattern develop. Remember, always, always keep the same color going over the top when you work your floats. Super important. So every time I cross these, I'm crossing the dark color over the top. You don't have to always keep your dark color over the top, but I recommend picking one method, picking one system for yours and doing it the same way in every single project. That way you never have to think about it. It just becomes second nature. And when I get to the next set of stitches, I don't have to think, wait, is it white over the top or is it berry over the top? I just know it's berry because I always cross the dark one over the top. So when I cross my stitches, I just do that quick little cross and then I'm ready for the next series. Uh, keep in mind when you are working over a longer stretch of stitches, four, five, six, and you're carrying those longer floats, you wanna make sure your tension is consistent. You wanna make sure they're not sagging. Now it's hard to tell in the float along the top edge because those haven't been caught yet. But if you look at the floats that you've caught along the bottom, and especially as you get going, you'll see more of that. So I have two that go off to the right and then I've started going off to the left. Make sure these aren't sagging or drooping. If they are, then it's a good sign they're a little too loose, which can happen more likely when you're carrying over a larger stretch of stitches, especially in a heavier weight yarn, like this is worsted weight, you're a little more likely to see it in this instance. So keep an eye on your tension, make sure it's consistent. You don't want it too tight. You wanna have a little bit of stretch to it, but you also don't want it too loose. So if you're seeing sagging or drooping after you've caught the floats, then that's a sign they might be a little too loose. So you might wanna back up and try it again. Mm -hmm.